Hello, my name is Karen Swayze. I am an associate professor in the College of Health Solutions at Arizona State University. I would like to thank the organizers of this virtual conference for inviting me to share research from my laboratory exploring the effects of a short-term high-fat diet on gut, liver, and cardiovascular health in adolescent male rats and the development of metabolic syndrome in these animals. Metabolic syndrome is diagnosed when a patient exhibits at least three of the following symptoms, visceral obesity, insulin resistance, hypertension, high triglycerides, and low HDL cholesterol. Obesity, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes are increasingly prevalent in Western societies, as shown in this figure from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. This figure depicts the prevalence of these conditions among U.S. adults aged 20 to 65 years. And what we see is that about a third of the adults in the United States have been diagnosed with obesity. These data are concerning as obesity can increase the risk for developing metabolic syndrome as well as diabetes. The high prevalence of obesity and diabetes is not limited to Western societies. In fact, Middle Eastern countries are experiencing some of the largest increases in obesity globally. In addition, 3.4 million deaths annually are caused by overweight and obesity worldwide. And obesity and overweight have actually increased 27.5% in adults since 1980, and more alarmingly, 47% in children in the same time frame. In fact, Currently, 14% of children and adolescents worldwide are either overweight or obese, which presents a significant risk for metabolic syndrome and future development of cardiovascular diseases and type 2 diabetes as adults. In my lab, we have created a model of metabolic syndrome in adolescents, induced by feeding young, six-week-old male Sprague Dolly rats a diet high in saturated fats for six weeks. Shown in this table are the macronutrient contents of each diet. The high-fat diet is comprised mainly of fat, as the name implies, with 60% fat content, mainly in the form of lard, 20% carbohydrates, and 20% proteins. In comparison to the chow diet, which contains about 5% fat, 57% carbohydrates, and 19% proteins. Now it's important to note that this diet is shorter duration than many studies, which allows us to explore some of the earlier effects of a high fat diet. Moreover, we have shown in our prior studies that this diet promotes weight gain and increased body fat and leads to several other symptoms related to metabolic syndrome that I will briefly review. Shown in this figure um, are data from a prior study published in 2011 where we demonstrated that rats fed the high-fat diet have a significantly higher systolic blood pressure compared to those fed the chow diet. And this was measured by tail cuff plasmography. We also see that rats fed a high-fat diet have significantly greater circulating levels of plasma tumor necrosis factor alpha, or TNF-alpha, compared to chow-fed animals. So they have a state of systemic inflammation. In addition, we see that animals fed the high-fat diet have an increase in fasting glucose and impaired glucose tolerance. And those data are from another study published in 2010, where we looked at whole blood glucose concentrations over time. And here at baseline, time zero, we see that the rats fed the high-fat diet have significantly higher fasting blood sugar. And after receiving an oral bolus of glucose, we see that the ability for these high-fat diet-fed animals to lower blood sugar is impaired. So the data that I wanted to share with you today is from a study published in 2019 in the journal Lipids. And in this study, we looked at the gut, liver, and cardiovascular outcomes of the short-term high-fat diet. Gut dysbiosis is a potential mechanism that can promote systemic inflammation, insulin resistance, as well as liver and cardiovascular disease. In fact, many of you may have heard about the gut-liver axis or the gut-brain axis. So with gut dysbiosis, the microbiome profile shifts towards an increased abundance of microbes that can trigger increases in systemic inflammation through the release of factors such as lipopolysaccharide that can leak through the gut wall and enter the systemic circulation.
So one of the first things we looked at was circulating concentrations of plasma lipopolysaccharides to see if these animals fed the high fat diet might be developing uh, gut dysbiosis. And in fact, we do see significantly greater circulating levels of LPS in these animals. When we look at inflammation in the gut wall, um, these data are from the cecum, we see that animals fed the high fat diet has significantly greater protein expression of the inflammatory cytokine NF kappa B as well as interleukin 1 beta. So the gut wall is inflamed. So that led us to the question of whether or not the gut microbiome might actually be different in these animals. And we find that it is. So in the animals fed the high fat diet, there is a different prevalence of, there's a different profile of microbes compared to the animals fed the child control diet. And here's a summary of what we found here. So the samples collected from the cecum of high fat diet animals were more abundant in phyla associated with inflammation. In fact, many classes of firmicutes that were enriched in these samples from the high fat diet animals are also abundant in human and animal models of metabolic and gastrointestinal diseases such as colorectal cancer and irritable bowel disease. Moreover, several of these phyla are associated with the onset of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in clinical studies. So the increased abundance of phyla that were associated with the development of liver disease made us curious whether or not the short-term high-fat diet could likewise impact the liver health of our study animals. So the first thing we looked at was uh, fatty infiltration in the liver, and not surprisingly, the six-week high-fat diet resulted in increased triacylglycerol concentrations in the liver. And we also see that in these uh, liver sections here. So here's a liver section from a chow-fed animal versus a high-fat diet animal, and these liver sections were stained with oil red O, which picks up on um, neutral lipids. And we see more oil red O staining in the liver sections from high-fat diet animals, and including these areas here where there's lipid droplets, creating these spaces between the hepatocytes. We also see that the high fat diet animals have higher levels of ALT activity, which is indicative of liver damage. Although we are starting to see simple steatosis as evidenced by the fat infiltration of the liver in these animals, and we are seeing this increase in ALT activity, there was no evidence of inflammation as assessed by changes in protein expression of several inflammatory cytokines shown down here. Moreover, there was no evidence yet of changes in the expression of proteins involved in insulin signaling in the liver um, that could promote metabolic syndrome. Although, it should be pointed out that Western blots are semi-quantitative and may miss subtle changes in protein expression and they also do not assess changes in activity of proteins or enzymes, um, which might be possible given the hyperglycemia evident in these animals. So as I mentioned early on in this presentation, overweight and obesity increase the risk for developing cardiovascular disease. So some of the more recent um, studies that we've looked at, this one is published in um, 2010 here, we looked at calcium-free diameter, in response to acetylcholine concentration. So these are isolated mesenteric resistance arteries. And we constrict these arteries down to 50% of their resting inner diameter, and then measure changes in the um, diameter of the blood vessel in response to this endothelium-dependent vasodilator acetylcholine. And what we see is that the vessels from the high-fat diet-fed animals have impaired vasodilation. And this could, of course, help explain the increase in um, blood pressure in these animals. In other studies, we exposed these blood vessels to antioxidants as well as anti-inflammatory compounds, and we found that this impaired vasodilation was actually due to oxidative stress as well as activation of inflammatory pathways within the vasculature of the high-fat diet animals. And so more recently, we have begun to explore changes in the expression of genes in the vasculature that might contribute to hypertension, as well as other pathologies resulting from high fat intake. And I would like to share with you the results of a study that we just submitted for publication.
So what we did in this study is we extracted aortas and assessed which genes were significantly altered in the aorta samples from high-fat diet rats as compared to chow-fed controls. Each gene is assigned a gene ontology biological process term, um, indicative of the pathway that it's in. And this information is used to find terms that are enriched in the data. So we found five overall processes that were relevant to the aorta, including muscle cell remodeling, insulin peptide hormone processes, lipid processes, carbohydrate processes, and vascular processes. Nodes within um, these, with the multiple colors, are assigned to multiple clusters. So this response to insulin set of genes is also down here related to lipid processes, etc. And larger nodes are more significant because they are high, higher level terms in the GO hierarchy. So some of these larger terms are just upstream of other genes in the pathway. And so they regulate more genes. So of interest to this study, we see changes in lots of different pathways associated with muscle cell remodeling that can impact the ability for blood vessels to constrict and dilate and might help promote that hypertension. We also see changes in insulin signaling pathways um, and responses to gonadotropins, cyclic AMPs, hormone stimulus, thyroid stimulus, catecholamines, etc. in addition to responses to insulin, which can act as a vasodilator. Not surprisingly, we, we see a lot of changes in the expression of genes associated with lipid processes as we're feeding these animals a high-fat diet. So regulation of fatty acid, uh, fat cell determination, uh, differentiation, sorry, responses to fatty acids, cellular responses to corticotropin releasing hormone stimuluses, things like that, as well as um, regulation of fatty acid oxidation. We also see changes in pathways associated with carbohydrate processes, gluconeogenesis. As we know, gluconeogenesis increases um, in metabolic syndrome to help promote um, hyperglycemia, as well as diabetes, right? So a particular relevance to the aorta are all these changes in genes associated with the vascular processes and the regulation of blood pressure and the ability to carry oxygen in the blood, as well as these inorganic cation homeostases that might be involved in regulating blood pressure, vasoconstriction, etc regulation of blood vessel diameter. So we see changes in a lot of different pathways. Now what I'm not showing you is changes in individual genes because we don't have time in this uh, presentation to go through that. Um, but a couple of things that are really interesting that I wanted to point out are changes in genes associated with thermogenesis. As we know, high fat diets can promote more white adipose tissue, which can alter thermogenesis in animals. We also see changes in memory and learning, suggestive that these high-fat diets can have central effects in these animals, even after such a short duration of diet. So in conclusion, a short-term six-week high-fat diet induces symptoms consistent with metabolic syndrome in young male rats. So I've listed here the five criteria for metabolic syndrome, and these rats certainly fit in with the high blood sugar, visceral obesity, and hypertension criteria. Um, while they do have high triglycerides in the liver, we were not able to assess um, circulating triglycerides in these animals. We also find that these animals have symptoms of gut dysbiosis and simple steatosis, in addition to changes in the expression of genes related to several metabolic disease states. So the findings from this study show early changes occurring in the gut, liver, and cardiovascular system of these animals in response to a high-fat diet that are consistent with metabolic syndrome. It will be interesting to explore whether these changes are actually linked to changes in the gut microbiome, as emerging research, for, research from other investigators seems to suggest. And with that, I would like to give special thanks to Melissa Crawford, who was a PhD student in my laboratory and completed the work on the gut and liver study that was published in Lipids. She is now a postdoctoral fellow at the University of California, Riverside.
In addition to Alex Moore, who is currently a PhD student in the Exercise and Nutrition Science Program in the College of Health Solutions at Arizona State University, he was responsible for the gene analyses in the um, aorta of these animals. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time.